Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and I'm presenting my addition to the YouTubers Community Space Station project. As you can see, I have a rather tall rocket, although the design is not a traditional top-heavy or uh, bottom-heavy design. In this case, I have most of the rockets near the top, and dangling down beneath it, we have a very long strut assembly. Now, of course, I have mentioned the pendulum fallacy before, but that's not what I'm going for here. It just happened to be the most stable way I could do it. You see, those rockets are actually secured to the um, the crew assembly at the top, and then from that, the tail or the, the truss hangs down. Now, the idea is this is going to be a an isolation lab. We're going to hook this onto the station and do all your scary nuclear, biological, chemical, you know, drug, hallucinogenic experiments out there. And uh, if anything goes seriously wrong, you can just ditch this thing and the if it explodes, then the station won't be as badly affected. So, well, yeah, you can see it's... Um, I'm just going to use the maneuver nose to get into orbit. I'm kind of brute forcing this. Uh, <laughs> it had plenty of fuel left, although I think... Well, I get it down to like uh, 4.5 and then start approaching. So it gets into orbit nearly enough. And then now the danger is that I'm going to run out of RCS fuel since there is a... Well, this thing is not the most agile of spacecraft, I'm sure you'll understand. But nonetheless, we uh, get ready, we run out of fuel, ditch that, and something explodes, but I'm not sure what. But it seems to fly at least no more terribly than the original design. Well, anyway, we get within a couple of hundred meters, and now we're going to try and figure out how to dock this thing. It has RCS thrusters all the way down its length, but those are temporary at this time. The You can see the struts that are uh, distanced out from it. Those are all attached to decouplers because the original design had issues with being essentially too big and too complicated for uh, poor people with PCs that might not be able to handle the load. So uh, I built this I built this new design, which is designed to dump a lot of stuff through decouplers. So once we get in there, we won't actually need this. You can also see that it wobbles quite a bit. We switch to a chase cam mode here. And it's actually, it's a kind of weird thing to fly because the distance you get is based upon the command module rather than the docking port. Even although I've said control this from the docking port, it, it gives me a distance of 70 plus meters and actually it doesn't get anywhere near that. So I guess we could actually use this as a measure of how long the ship is, but nonetheless, just going to try and do a regular docking. It's kind of hard beca because this large thing oscillates a lot. You see the um, you see the velocity vector just bumps around one way or another. I'm not using ASAS or anything. This is simply because uh, as soon as we fire those thrusters, you get transient waves set up along the structure. This isn't even the longest structure I tried to build in space. This just happens to be the longest that I could reasonably get it and stay below the size limit that was uh, given to me. I had to make this smaller than 50 uh, parts. So most of it's actually way below that. And uh, the main restriction is trying to fit it into the vehicle assembly building. You need to you need to do a lot of clicking and dragging stuff off the edge to actually make this work. But you know, with a lot of delicate maneuvering, we do get it in just very slowly. Uh, you can see that on the face of it, this dwarfs the rest of the station, but it, it is, of course, just long and thin. Uh, and and to be honest, you know, we don't want it near to the space station itself because if the space station explodes, this will also serve as a, an escape system. Now, the hardest part is that the the velocity vector uh, isn't anywhere near as accurate. The, or the, 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 pink, the pink position is, is basically measured relative to the command capsule and a slight, even a slight rotation <laughs> of the spacecraft shows up as a huge location of the docking uh, port. I, I didn't want to add like another control, I guess I could have added like a probe body and flown it from there. But uh, that's not what happened, so I just did it this way and manually maneuvered this thing in. It, I think I miss a couple of times. Yeah, uh, 
nope it's not sure mrs try to get it again uh, i mean it, literally i could translate or i can just point it in the right direction and hope that it hits and uh, nope misses again come on this is like you know whales mating or something and uh yeah so i turn off rcs hoping in vain that the torque of this will turn it straight nope that's not gonna happen so uh in the end i just start to provide a small amount of uh, pitch to bring it back to restore it nope there we go just giving a little little jump i don't want to overdo it because i could knock the docking port off we're starting to turn ever so slowly in fact i think the space station is, is actually starting to torque around i hadn't noticed that previously there we go we have a clean mating here so now we uh, could leave it like that and there is a version i saved like that but really we want to lighten things up so that the space station is of more use to the forthcoming crew so that they'll be able to dock so we get this set up and using the staging there creating a whole cloud of space debris not bad huh and there we go so the isolation lab will be uh the home to all the dangerous experiments and yeah in the event of a major disaster it will be able to return to the planet on its own it has it has a small amount of rcs fuel it has rcs engines and it has uh, parachutes on it so here we're going to demonstrate in a simulated form obviously the return capabilities see we turn this around and it has a four-man lab underneath it however it is it takes a great deal of skill to land it with that lab still attached unfortunately what tends to happen is that it gets snapped off and the occupants will plummet to their doom nonetheless it's better than remaining in space right some chance is better than no chance at all yeah here we go zipping over the kerbal space center again purely by chance i had not planned this getting ready to deploy those parachutes as our velocity drops down and there we go parachutes are blue and there they catch in the atmosphere so that would be a return a successful return this is one thing i learned from goon station is make sure you can return safely in your parts because it sucks to not have enough people anyway this was actually the second take on this design because originally i tried something else uh we wanted i wanted to make the same thing really long item on the end of a, a long tether the problem was that that i was forced to redo it so I, I i built it this way as a stack a cluster of seven girder segments that i would attach and detach to build the thing up one section at a time so by doing this of course i compressed the the entirety of the the very long truss into a much more manageable length and so you set it up and then decouple these once that was decoupled you'd switch to the rocket or the the thing and slide back and hook on another one this was actually incredibly difficult to the point that when i got to the the last one well as you go further back the tether starts to wait wobble more the thing gets wider and wider and eventually you end up um with something that is is down to pure luck rather than any skill it doesn't help that when you get close to it then it would start swinging around oscillating because there was a restoring force on it there we go we got another one and there we detach that attach one more in the end i think uh i ran out of patience well i know i ran out of patience I ran out of patience because the oscillations were too great but I think I ended up building a larger tether in the end but because it had more docking ports I guess and more parts it was much more complex and, and would cause more stress to your average PC than the, the single one. So here's one more segment, I think this is the last segment I attached. Mm, sorry I'm drinking some uh, champagne here. <laughs> not exactly toasting this launch 
I'm just uh, reminiscing about the great times we had together building this thing. Seriously, this took so much pain, <laughs> so much hardship, and I uh, swore out loud when I was told I would have to redo it. So instead I went and built the alternate design, which I think you'll agree is actually more elegant and more interesting. You can see everything wobbling about, like you see the velocity vector just shooting around like a maniac. There we go, that was our final truss length. I guess it is longer than that mode, but uh, can't be helped, so we, we dump these. And of course by doing it, the whole thing wobbles around like a crazy thing. And uh, yeah, we could also detach the fuel section here, and we're left with our functioning lab on our ginormous station. But, well, that version is available if you want to mess around with it, but uh, the one that's officially on the station is the first one that I, I pushed. Anyway, hope you are interested in this. I am Scott Manley. Fly safe. <laughs>